Hey guys, my name is Pamela and welcome back to my channel at home with me. Today we're going to be talking about um, how to choose whether you want to live on base or off base and what's going to be better for you, um, for, for yourself and for your family. If you're living on base, it's going to give you a lot more opportunity to be present in the army community. Um, so if you have children, you're going to be closer to all the events um, that they put out for family members or for soldiers in general. So you're going to be closer to the MWR, you're going to be closer to the CDC, which is like the child care, you're going to be closer to work, you're going to be closer to the commissary, the PX, um, you're also going to have gas stations inside. Um, basically, there is everything that you need is it's going to be on base, like they're going to offer it to you. Uh, so if you don't mind using those resources from the army, then on base is going to give you all of that and you're going to benefit from it. They also um, offer a gym. I think there's probably multiple gyms throughout bases. At least from our experience, there's always been more than one gym. Uh, in one base. From what I know, they're free. You don't have to pay for them. You just have to sign up with your sponsor ID number, um, I think. And that's really nice because then you're saving money there. Gym memberships can cost a lot of money. Uh, and the fact that that's offered to you at no cost is great. Uh, they also have childcare in some gym facilities, uh, which is really nice. That way you can work out while your kids are being watched. You're also going to be a lot closer to work, at least for the military spouse, the, the, the soldier in your home. They're going to be able to just drive like a couple minutes down the road and you don't have to worry about traffic. I know for my husband, he hates traffic. He does not do well in vehicles for um, a certain amount of time. So, you know, we kind of... That's, that was really nice for us, that he was able to just drive a minute down the road and he was at work. Um, another thing is going to be, you're going to be able to save money if you're living on base because you're going to be able to, you don't have to pay for utilities. You don't have to pay for um, your rent. You don't have to pay for, you know, your electric bills. And so you get to save some money there. And not only that, but if you're not aware of, um, like, you know, mortgage and how to take care of a home. Um, well, that's really nice because the military will take care of all that. From our experience, um, we were able to either hire somebody to like mow our lawn or the um, military actually came around and like mowed everybody's lawns. Um, I don't know how it works right now, but that's like the only thing that I'm probably not sure on. One of the downfalls that I realized uh, from living on base was that you don't really get a lot of variety. So you kind of just get what the military gives you when it comes to housing. You don't get to choose from the nicer homes to the older homes. You just get what you get. Another downfall would be that you don't have a lot of privacy. Like you could go to the commissary, which is the grocery store, and your sergeant is there and the people that you work with are there. Uh, you can go to the gym and the people that you work with are there again. I mean, you kind of don't get to leave work, which for me, that's a downfall because you're constantly seeing the same people every day. They're watching you or at least you feel like you're being watched. Um, like your sergeants or the, the people that are in charge of you are always there. And I, I didn't like that and neither did Sean. So another weird thing that I, I didn't like, and I don't think Sean minded at that point cause he was always at work. But when we lived in Bragg, there was always mortar rounds going off and they would shake the entire house. Um, not extremely but just enough to where like some um, like picture frames would fall off the walls and scared the crap out of me. Um, and so if you don't like loud sounds, like take that into consideration, just like be aware, ask around, you know, like, hey, is there loud, loud noises? Like do mortar rounds go off? Like do they have a training center nearby? Cause I know for, uh, for Bragg when we were there, they definitely did and they were loud. To sum it up with um, living on base, you're going to do it because of ease. Everything is already offered for you on base. Anything that you could need, like I said, the commissary, the PX, which is like, um, 
just like a store where they have like clothing, anything pretty much, makeup. Um, and so they kind of tailor it to make sure that everybody, if you need something, you can get it on base, which is really nice. I mean, you can do your taxes on base, anything. The only problem with it that I think you, you, you know, that you could have is that you just get used to being on base so much that you might not actually get out and you might not go out and explore what um, off base has to offer. But if you want to play it safe and you just want to have everything taken care of, you don't have to worry about finding a grocery store or a um, department store, like anything, then on base is gonna be a lot easier. You're gonna be able to find childcare, you're gonna be able to find uh, events for your kids, if you wanna put them in gymnastics, if you wanna put them in um, Taekwondo, martial arts, anything at all, soccer, they usually have the MWR systems in place so that your kid can attend them. Now, let's talk about off base. Sean and I both lived on base and off base for quite some time, so um, again, on base, had its pros and I liked that it was really easy to get around and to do a lot of things um, but with off base it was really nice because you get to choose your home there's a lot more options we got to shop around neighborhoods we got to figure out how far we wanted to be from base um, and at that point I had a job too so it was nice to make sure that I was close to work just as much as he was close to work so our drives were, um, were really nice. Oh, another thing that I forgot to mention. So if you're living on base, you can have one vehicle. I don't know if there's people out there who are still family and who have family and still run around or on one vehicle, but um, it's a great way to save money. And honestly, if you only have one vehicle, I wouldn't even worry about living on base uh, because there's um, like shuttles running through base at all times so if your husband or your wife is out working with the car then and you need to go grocery shopping you can take the bus you can take the shuttle um, or if you need to go grab something you can take the shuttle and it's super nice but um, again not everybody wants that but I figured I'd put it out there because we only we only ran on one vehicle for a really long time with that said if you're living off base you're gonna need two vehicles because if you have if both parents are working then you're gonna need to get to work somehow right once you pick out your house off base or your apartment or whatever it is you're trying to go for um, you can tailor it so you can play with the budget that the military gives you the military is going to give you a BAH um, BAH can range depending on your uh, soldier's rank so uh, what's actually really nice is that if they let's say they allot you like a lot of money then you can probably just use some of that for a rent uh, portion and then obviously a little bit for your utilities to pay that off but not only that but you can actually save the rest so you're able to kind of play with that and I, I liked it I thought that was really nice because you know, we never maxed out our BAH. We all, we were always able to put some away into our savings. Another thing is you're gonna be able to decorate more. You're gonna be able to um, customize your home to your liking because there's not going to be as many um, regulations as there is on base when it comes to painting and decorating your house. A huge bonus for us was that you get some privacy. So you're not, uh, you're not seeing a lot of soldiers constantly. Uh, I mean, soldiers are great. Don't get me wrong. We just, we just, Sean and I are very private. So we like to be able to go to the, to the store, to Target, to Walmart, anywhere, the grocery store and not see people that, you know, he worked with or people that we just knew from on base. Um, it just felt like you're leaving work when you're leaving work. Does that make sense? little thing that I'm going to put in there because it kind of um, affects me <laughs> is that you can have as many pets as you like off base. Actually, no, scratch that. There's probably, yeah, some um, regulations to, you know, certain rental properties uh, off base, but on base, they're a lot more strict. So um, I don't know if they still consider like pit bulls, dangerous breeds or whatever. We had a pit bull and it was always kind of, oh yeah, that's right. Um, I think Bragg doesn't like dangerous breeds. So um, we kind of played around with that a little bit. 
And then a huge one for living off base, guys, is if um, if you know that that's going to be your last duty station, um, or, or even if not, okay, um, and you want to get into real estate, that's going to be the the way to do it. At least for us, it worked really well. You know, you're getting paid BAH. What we did was we uh, bought a home once we got to our duty station, and this was in Colorado. And then BAH kicked in, so basically the military was paying for our mortgage. Um, and then afterwards, you just, you can PCS, and then you can have somebody rent your house. Um, and it just starts paying itself, paying itself off. Uh, so that's really nice because you're able to, you know, make some money there on the side, start your real estate uh, journey if you wanted to do that. If you're, you know, looking for a little bit of an adventure and you're really interested in finding out what that state that you're stationed in has to offer um, and you just want to get out there, I would say off base is going to be the way to go just because you get to experience a lot more. Yes, you do have to do a lot, um, a lot more research and a lot more hunting, especially for homes but honestly it's not that hard um and you're able to find something that you truly love i i mean sean and i absolutely love being able to hunt around for our own home and be able to find a neighborhood that we wanted to be in and not only for that but because our daughter needed to go to school too so we made sure that it was around a neighborhood that we wanted her to be in i think that once you live off base you really don't go back to on base as much because you start setting down roots and you start finding um, your go-to stores, right? I mean, women like to go to Target and Walmart and whatnot, and so you start to get used to going to those places that are around the, the house that you live in off base. So there's really no purpose in you going back on base anymore. Um, so the only reason why you would go on base most of the time is if you want to use the commissary uh, or if you want to just go to work. I feel like it's not necessarily about what on base or what off base has to offer. I think it's more about how you want to go about your military journey, your military experience. How do you want to experience all these stations, all these duty stations that you're going to be sent to? Um, and I think that off base for, for us, that would be the way to go because to be honest, uh, in in my opinion, I feel like every base is pretty much the same, offers the same stuff, everything looks the same to me. Whereas to, you know, if you're getting stationed in Colorado, you can go off base and try to find an apartment or a house near the mountains and, and actually get the experience of uh, Colorado, of what it's like to live there. If you get stationed in North Carolina, guys, Fort Bragg, Fort Bragg is okay. All right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's not nice or anything, but it's a, it's a base. Um, but you can live in areas around Fort Bragg that are much nicer and that have a lot more to offer. Um, so I like that because I feel like you're able to save a little bit of money by playing with that budget that the BAH gives you and you're also able to experience that state a little bit more so that way you know when you are you and your spouse are done with the military and you guys are all done and you finally get settled you know that every state that you've been in you've actually fully experienced um I don't know that's my take that's pretty much it guys. Thank you guys so much for all the likes and all the new subscribers. Um, I appreciate you guys. Again, this channel is just to make sure that all of our spouses are a little bit educated uh, more and more on military life and really what it's like to be married to a um, special operations soldier. And hopefully I can make you guys uh, you know, more videos and more videos throughout the week. I know this one took a while. <sighs> I've been so busy just, you know, mothering and being a spouse. So this one took me a while to get to. And then there was Halloween, whatever. I hope you guys had an amazing weekend with your families or with your friends, having fun, getting dressed up. Um, for all those spouses whose husbands are going through selection right now, 
um, I'm thinking about you and I'm praying for you and I'm praying for your husband because I know what it was like just sitting there wondering, like, I wonder what he's going through. I wonder what he's doing right now. I miss him. I feel you. I totally remember those times. Um, so just know that I am here for you. If you have any questions, just let me know. The fastest way to reach to me is going to be through my Instagram um, on kindness and grace, which I will link down below. Um, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll try to answer them as fast as I can. Okay, guys. Bye.